to bed of the night that everybody dreads uh, yes. the words. Uh, but I'll let you back to drink. And I, the way the format this is going to take is I'm going to say a few words, as few as I can make it. Uh, and then I'm going to hand you over to Ivor, who's going to talk to you about the book. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled to be asked to, to, uh, to launch this uh, launch the book. I'm actually in the book, which I'm delighted about. I think possibly on the strength of uh, a set of costumes that made Elvis look like just a man in the street. You know, uh, there is, there's still a bench warrant out from The Hague for uh, crimes against fashion, against the early horselips. But uh, I, I, I could do no better, I think, than, uh, than uh, just read from the sleeve note right at the start, because it, it actually says what it does in the tin. Uh, Elvis in Ireland is the Irish biography of Elvis Presley. It is a detailed story of Elvis Presley's life and career, combined, and this is the important thing, with the timeline of events in Irish popular culture and the social changes brought on by his unique brand of rock and roll. What you'll find here is just about everything to do with Elvis and his links with Ireland, including anecdotes, entertaining trivia on Elvis's connection with Ireland and his Irish chart successes. And that's what the book does. And, I mean, Elvis in Ireland... Famously, Elvis never got within a hound's girl of Ireland. I mean, Colonel Tom Parker didn't have a green card, so he couldn't let him out because then he couldn't let him in. He was willing to let him out to go in the army, but other than that, he wasn't going anywhere. So Elvis never got here. But it's a bit, without being too irreverent, it's a bit like Jesus never got here either. And, you know, a book called Jesus in Ireland would have almost eff effectively the same story, but with a bit less music. Now, John uh, Lennon, I'm in trouble for that. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yeah, well, I'm having my books burned outside later on. Um, um, so, uh, you know, I, I am in common with, I presume, everybody here. I never saw Elvis live. And really, it was my own fault because I could have. He was playing Vegas in 76. And we were around about, and we probably could have blagged our way in. But by then, you know, he was kind of slightly sad Elvis. He, he was, uh, as, as you described, my rather sadly, he was, he was a bit bloated and depressed. And, you know, the suits had to be stitched up and then let out uh, routinely because Vegas was getting to him. And so I never, saw, I never saw Elvis in Vegas. But oddly enough, I saw someone that's a great metaphor for this book because... I saw Brenton Boyer in Vegas, <laughs> and Brendan really was Elvis walking the streets of Ireland. Ireland yeah. Elvis's da or Brenton's dancing could could best be described poss possibly as being overly Caucasian, but he could do you know he could do the hip shake and he and he, he did the, the the swivel, and 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 Elvis became friends with with Brendan in the end, and Brendan in a way. Is, is the living example of what you're talking about, of, of someone who took, who, who was turned completely on by Elvis, as I was in my time, and who brought Elvis's moves and Elvis's music into the dance halls. And uh, the one thing that I remember about, about uh, we, we, we did used to go, we used to go and see that there were originally the Big Eight, and then they became the, the, the Irish show band, and, and uh, we'd call by, and We'd say hello and we'd watch the show. And the thing that, that what the dressing room, when you opened the door, that most swept out of the dressing room was homesickness. But that's another story. But the, what Brendan used to do was he used to send, right at the start, before Elvis was even playing Vegas very much, Brendan used to he'd send a photograph home every year to the, to the new spotlight. And it always said, Brendan chats with his friend Elvis. And it was always the same photo. Elvis was half turned, and he was saying either get security or who is this? And Brenton was beside him with a big grin, and then he legged it. But later, they did become friends, and uh, Elvis uh, used to occasionally josh uh, Brenton about his moves and, and, and teach, him, teach him a few more. Um, it wasn't just Brendan. Uh, as you'll see in this book, Phil Linnett, Hugely, uh, hugely influenced, hugely affected. Uh, the King's Call is a very, very heartfelt moment. Uh, you too, uh, huge part of the career. Elvis in America, uh, in Rattling Home, you, you see them going th that pilgrimage to Graceland. Uh, pretty much everybody uh, has a has an entry in here. Everyone who made music in Ireland has an entry in here. And that's its. That's its. It's for me its greatest fascination. I mean, what's the oddest cover? I think probably Therapy. 
doing CC Rider, <laughs> although Blink uh, doing what? what was Heartbreak it? Hotel. Blink doing Heartbreak <laughs> Hotel might well come in second. <laughs> and uh, maybe Horselips' rendition of uh, You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog <laughs> during the sound checks <laughs> probably comes in third. So before I hand you over to Ivor, I want to congratulate uh, Don and Nula on the fantastic illustrations. And, uh, and now I want to hand over to the young man who did it all. You're in trouble, mate. <laughs> OK. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming here. It's an incredible turnout. I wasn't expecting anything like this. And I want to thank Barry for uh, launching the book for me and for his nice words. Um, like many writers, I'm a bit nervous. Like I almost feel like I'd write, rather write this down and email you all later. But uh, I suppose I'll have to give it a shot. Um, I, uh, I began writing Elvis in Ireland in 2002. I was going to the Leaving Cert at the time, and uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, uh, English was the main subject at school you know, um, that I took a big interest in, and I had taken a big interest in Elvis since I was about 13, I discovered him on TV in 1997. I, uh, there was a big tribute to him on the 20th uh, anniversary of his death, and I was just captivated by the energy and excitement of his performances. So uh, by the time we were leaving, leaving Cert, I decided I'd just uh, put my interest in English and my interest in Elvis together and put the, write a book about him. But uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I went, it took me 10 months to write, and you could say 10 years to edit it together and all that. But uh, trying to get a publisher was a difficult, difficult task over the few years. Um, the main reason they turned me down was because I didn't have any photographs of Elvis. It was uh, an unusual kind of uh, rejection, but uh, that was the way it was. So um, I decided to self-publish the book. So the book's all self-published now, you know, and uh, it's great to have it finally done. Um, the 10 years, though, I, I discovered so many things about Elvis. So it was kind of good that it ended up being 10 years because I, uh, I made many trips to the National Archives and the National Library and the Gilbert Library. Uh, I think everyone should try out the Gilbert Library. It's an incredible library to, to do research. It's a place, quiet place to read. And um, In the National Archives, I found the uh, Irish Film Censors notes. Uh, and th that was one of the more interesting things I, I find in, in the connections is that um, Elvis's films were highly censored in Ireland when he, in the 1950s and 60s, and uh, King Creole, as a lot of people know, was banned in Ireland on its original release. So that's the kind of stuff now that I, I, I try to find in, in the book, you know, or what I want to do, put across in the book, was how Ireland perceived Elvis and how, they re how it received rock and roll at the time. Uh, and that's what it is. It's, an evolu it's kind of a, a book that tells the, um, the evolution of rock and roll and pop popular culture in Ireland. Um, the uh, what are we going to say now? <laughs> um, I suppose that's it's not just for Elvis fans, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You know, it's it's about how it's a social document of mm -hmm. Ireland mm -hmm. in the fifties and uh, the sixties and how how we were as a people in the time at that time. Um, I. Uh, I I have to thank quite a lot of people for having helping me get this book. My my parents were um, Jerome and Eula. They um they they were quite a quite a support over the few years. You know they they proofread the book in the early stages and um, then it took my good friend Peter uh, Peter Donnelly here. He um he volunteered to proofread my book there last year and that um, that was the icing on the cake for me was to finally have it my final draft all sorted, you know, and uh, if anyone's ever looking for a good proofreader, Peter's the man. <laughs> so, um, and uh, Kingston as well, um, helped me with the formatting and the, the, the structure and a, Nula painted the, um, the, did the painting and uh, uh, Kingston helped with the, uh, with the, the formatting anyway of, of it all. So it's, it's Self-publishing is a very difficult task. If anyone here is self-published, you, you'll know that it's a huge, a huge undertaking that a lot of people don't really, um, don't really see until they actually get involved in it. Um, but uh, I guess uh, the main thing is that I've finally got to publish. It's taken a big part of my life, you know, ten years. No one really stays, stays that long on a book project, but I was very passionate about writing about Elvis and writing about the connections and. I am. Um, I'm just happy to have it 
finish now, you know, so. As a lot of people know, who um, I've read it already, uh, I make a lot of the links with, with singers who've uh, covered, covered Elvis' songs, and Barry was telling me the other day that, uh, yeah, as he just mentioned, how they in the rehearsals they cover Hound Dog. So I just hope I can do a revised edition <laughs> eventually, where um, horselips do an actual master and do a Celtic twist on Hound Dog or something like that. So. Yeah, yeah, the good. word's wrong, I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> think <I> know. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much for sharing.